I must admit, I've never really appreciated poetry for much of my life. It's something I just didn't give much thought to and I certainly didn't investigate. But I have heard and read more poetry since coming to UUCCI than ever before and have been truly touched by some of it. However, I still felt quite inadequate to be the worship associate on Poetry Sunday until Lori mentioned song lyrics as poetry. Now that resonates with me. I invite you to think of the song Imagine by John Lennon. While beautiful with the music, the lyrics can definitely stand alone as a con contemplative poem. Imagine no possessions. I wonder if you can. No need for greed or hunger, a fellowship of man. Imagine all the people sharing all the world. You may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I hope someday you'll join us and the world will live as one. And then there's Bob Dylan. How many ears must one man have? before he can hear people cry? Yes, and how many deaths will it take till he knows that too many people have died? And finally, you can hear Louis Armstrong sing his famous song and hear the hope in the heart. The colors of the rainbow, so pretty in the sky, they're also on the faces of the people passing by. I see friends shaking hands, saying, how do you do? They're really saying, I love you. I hear babies cry and I watch them grow. They'll learn much more than I'll ever know. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. These songs and others like them have expressed my feelings, helped me hope, and lifted my spirits throughout my life. So, wow, I guess maybe I am a poetry person. Okay. <gasps> Have any of you seen one of these before? Yeah. Maybe at school or maybe you've had one at home? No? Can any of the adults help me out? Have you seen this before? <laughs> yes. What is it? For chrysalises and butterflies? Oh, so there's not any in there, but we might, maybe. We're not gonna catch butterflies. Come on down here, that's it. <laughs> Come on down here, I'm gonna share something. That's my mask. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is talk a little bit about caterpillars and butterflies. Has anyone seen caterpillars or butterflies? Only white ones, yeah. And sometimes we might see moths, too, which are in the same family as butterflies. Yeah, I wonder if any of the adults out there have been starting to clean out your garden beds and getting ready for spring. I've still been letting mine lay a little bit because it's still been a little chilly. Because do you know what? Sometimes under all of those dead leaves and stuff out there, there are butterflies and moths and all other things that help the garden that are kind of just cozied up nice and warm and taking a good snooze. And they have to wait till it's over 55 degrees to kind of poke out and pop out and emerge. So one of the ways we can help them is by doing that. The other thing, does anybody know how long it takes from caterpillar all the way to butterfly till they die? How long, we, we can live a really long time, right? Like some people, even a hundred years. Anybody have a guess? Three weeks from the very start of the eggs to the coming back around. And so that's kind of cool. So Lori gave me this lovely poem to share with you, Caterpillar 
by Christina Rossetti. So brown and furry. Can you make little caterpillars with your fingers? In a hurry, take your walk to the shady leaf or stalk or whatnot, which may be the chosen spot. No toads spy you, hovering bird of prey pass by you. And here's my favorite part. So they spin and die. Imagine this as your playset. Where you spin. Have you ever seen a, a chrysalis like that? It's kind of all hard and gray and brown and droopy. To live again. <laughs> so I hope you're on the lookout for little caterpillars and butterflies to brighten your day and remind you about awakening, oh, big stretches from that slumber of winter and waking up and spreading your wings to the spring. Children, It's Spring by Mary Oliver. And this is the lady whom everyone loves, Ms. Violet in her purple gown, or on special occasions, a dress the color of sunlight. She sits in the mossy weeds and waits to be noticed. She loves dampness. She loves attention. She loves especially to be picked by careful fingers young fingers entranced by what has happened to the world. We, the older ones, call it spring, and we have been through it many times, but there is still nothing like the children bringing home such happiness in their small hands. North Country by Mary Oliver. In the North Country now, it is spring and there is a certain celebration. The thrush has come home. He is shy and likes the evening best. Also the hour just before morning. In that blue and gritty light, he climbs to his branch or smoothly sails there. It is okay to know only one song if it is this one. Hear it rise and fall. The very elements of your soul shiver nicely. What would spring be without it? Mostly frogs. But don't worry, he arrives year after year, humble and obedient and gorgeous. You listen and you know you could live a better life than you do. Be softer, kinder. And maybe this year you will be able to do it. Hear how his voice rises and falls. There is no way to be sufficiently grateful for the gifts we are given, no way to speak the Lord's name often enough, though we do try. And especially now, as that dappled breast breathes in the pines and heaven's windows in the North Country, now spring has come, are opened wide. Joy, how I sought thee, silver I spent and gold on the pleasures of this world in splendid garments clad. The wine I drank was sweet, rich morsels I did eat. Oh, but my life was sad. Joy, how I sought thee. Joy, I have found thee, far from the halls of mirth, back to the soft green earth where people are not many. I find thee joy, in hours with clouds and birds and flowers. Thou dost not charge one penny. Joy, I have found thee. Hush, April is in the lane. Be very still, she may go again. The touch of her lilac scented hand is on my cheek. Do not speak to her, she may not understand. She is shy and white and very fair. 
Look, she leaves a crocus there. The daffodils awake and stir. Above my head, there is a whir of blue, blue wings. Oh, I am glad she is here. See, by the wild plum tree, she pauses. Soon it will be clad in petals fluttering like blown white tulle. April, you are too beautiful. Praise song for the day. Each day we go about our business, walking past each other, catching each other's eyes or not, about to speak or speaking. All about us is noise. All about us is noise and bramble, thorn and din, each one of our ancestors on our tongues. Someone is stitching up a hem, darning a hole in a uniform, patching a tire, repairing things in need of repair. Someone is trying to make music somewhere with a pair of wooden spoons on an oil drum, with cello, boombox, harmonica, voice. A woman and her son wait for the bus. A farmer considers the changing sky. A teacher says, take out your pencils, begin. We encounter each other in words, words spiny or smooth, whispered or declaimed, words to consider, reconsider. We cross dirt roads and highways that mark the will of someone and then others who said, I need to see what's on the other side. I know there's something better down the road. We need to find a place where we are safe. We walk into that which we cannot yet see. Say it plain, many have died for this day. Sing the names of the dead who brought us here, who laid the train tracks, raised the bridges, picked the cotton and the lettuce, built brick by brick, the glittering edifices they would then keep clean and work inside of. Praise song for struggle, praise song for the day, Praise song for every hand-lettered sign, the figuring it out at the kitchen table. Some live by love thy neighbor as thyself. Others by first do no harm or take no more than you need. What if the mightiest word is love? Love beyond marital, filial, national, love that casts a widening pool of light, love with no need to preempt grievance, in today's sharp sparkle, this winter air, anything can be made, any sentence begun, on the brink, on the brim, on the cusp. Praise song for walking forward in that light. Hi, my name's Sky Nicholson, and today I'm going to be reading two selections from uh, my new book, Unexpected Alchemy, Poems of Addiction and Awakening. This first poem is called Spring. Unfolding like a curled child, skin pressed by sleep, spring blinks awake. What a gift every year, a treat saved back all winter to be found again in bloom and bird and breeze. I never understood people who choose to live in a place without seasons. Unfurling like a shy lover, head bowed, lashes lifted, each petal swells in anticipation with a blush just warm enough to melt the frost. It happens every year, but it is always a rush, like the first time a titter of titillation as shivering blossoms offer a sneak peek, pink and round and exposed as newness bursts us open. It's too cold, yells the nagging wind. You'll freeze to death out here, whispers the pessimistic snow. You'll never survive the nibbling deer, chatters the bossy squirrel. Crocus don't care. 
Her bold adolescent sprouts push away last year's leaves and she pokes at the glimmering sun. No one's gonna tell her what she can or can't do. Flicking a green middle finger to the icy wind, she's turning heads and making a scene like the badass bulb her mama raised her to be. Hunting mushrooms. We came upon bluebells. When the heart gathers around color like a big full bud. When the heart takes that lavender purse, pulls tight, unclenches unexpectedly, cool and blue in a sea of soundless ringing. The heart, the bells, listen. Vanishing point. Two days, the wind has hurried last year's leaves down our road, past the point of seeing. I am safe here from forward motion, from the power that tosses a light wild bird on branches of sweet gum outside my window. To be safe is not enough. To be still is the beginning, wind moving across our landscape, fluting hollow rocks, and sounding like the first day of the world. There is, after stillness, the way we turn towards the wind, how we may go out today among the leaves and wild birds, humming our own windy tune. There is the way we choose to breathe deeply, our lungs making us light as the goldfinch. Something bright and musical keeps us here, fluttering, making brave movements in defiance of the wind. Sun worship. After days of cloud and fog, sun rises from the horizon as if from the cave of the earth, rises as a poem rises from the body, illuminating stark trees, intensifying the poinsettia, the piano, touching all things inside and out. The sun connects my skin with a radiant world. Light is within me that my life walks away from. How much longer will I stand in my own shadow? The sun breathes light, excites the morning wind, sees everything like a god. The sun touches a curtain and flowers bloom out from the cloth. A dead weed dances orange hued and pines turn rich, luminous as everything together in the yard, the house eases up from winter, turns to the east. When I was a child, I wrote quite a bit of rhyming poetry. Mostly they were greeting cards to family members. My father also wrote poems and practiced reading them aloud. So in my household, poetry just seemed part of everyday life. I had my first poems published in our city newspaper when I was in the seventh grade. I should have been very happy, but I was upset because the editor took the liberty of changing a couple of words without consulting me first. Before moving to Indiana, I had worked many years for a nonprofit organization that to taught poetry in Detroit public schools. I was in many writing workshops with children and adults, and I met many poets along the way. In fact, some of my closest friends are Michigan writers. What amazes me is when people think they don't know poetry or they feel like it's out of their grasp. Yes, I've met and worked with poets who have held jobs as professors and written books about Emily Dickinson, but I've also met poets who were assembly line workers software engineers, and dance instructors. The thing they all held in common was their appreciation and celebration of the written and spoken word. 
as Pam mentioned in her call to worship, poetry can be found in song lyrics. There are many songs that were written first as poems. Maybe you've heard John Cale's Do Not Go Gentle Into That Good Night, originally a poem penned by Dylan Thomas. Or perhaps you know the Beatles song, Golden Slumbers. But did you know that it was based on a poem? Cradle Song from the play, Patient Grizzle, a lullaby by the dramatist Thomas Decker. Many songwriters of all genres consider themselves poets at heart. Numerous poems, some in fact read here today, are based on observation. So I'm going to suggest a little poetry assignment for each of you to do on your own. Don't worry, it's not that difficult. Next time you're out in nature, soak in the trees, the flowers, the birds, the sky with all of your senses. Notice the sweet smell of an apple blossom, the melodic song of a chickadee, the sudden rise and flight of a mallard from the pond visible from your window. Observe how clouds change their shape, growing or dissipating in the sky. Feel the texture of newly sprouted grass or the roughness of tree bark. These observations are very poetic indeed. Listen again to these lines that Jan shared with us today in Praise Song for the Day by Elizabeth Alexander. Someone is stitching up a hem, darning a hole in a uniform, patching a tire, repairing the things in need of repair. Someone is trying to make music somewhere with a pair of wooden spoons on an oil drum, with cello, boombox, harmonica, voice. Listen. Can you hear those wooden spoons on the oil drum? When you close your eyes, can you visualize a person stitch stitching a hem? or patching a tire. Poetry is one way to sing praise to everyday moments. Think about the poem that Adrian shared with the children today, observing and praising a furry little caterpillar and the change that happens to its body. In one of the poems that Nancy read, vanishing point, she examines the power of the wind, how it can flute hollowed rocks and sound like the first day of the world. In other poems, we dig up and unfold images of daffodils, violets, crocuses. We show appreciation and give thought to the wild plum tree which pauses before come, becoming clad in fluttering petals. It is my experience that we encounter poetry in our everyday lives. Those of us who think like a poet are the ones who notice details and maybe pay a little more attention. We observe and contemplate not just the big things, but the small and delicate like Mary Oliver's thrush coming home to North Country or the children bringing home happiness in their small hands. And if you still don't think of yourself as a poet, I remind you of a service on Zoom back in February, 2021. Nick and I had asked you for moments, memories, images. And at the end of the service, well, maybe it was a little past that, maybe let's say the end of the day, but we as a congregation had composed a poem. 
a poem titled A Love Letter to UUCCI. We say we care when we walk our dogs, walk ourselves, walk in nature, and breathe deeply in our Indiana woods. We say we care by curling up with a good book, setting aside time for quiet, gazing at the nighttime sky, and when we give the wind time to speak. We care by cooking healthy food for ourselves, making chicken teriyaki for our family, preparing hot meals for those in need, and donating to local food banks. We bake our love into chocolate chip cookies, buttermilk biscuits, and cream cheese Danish. We show kindness when we write loving cards, send notes of gratitude, create family scrapbooks, phone our friends, and greet a stranger on the street. We show kindness when we recycle, plant trees, feed the birds, tend a garden, and clean up the rivers, parks, and roadsides. We display love by serving in our community, donating to worthy causes, and when we stand up against social injustice. We love by being fully present with each other. We love when we are patient, forgiving, and when we listen, listen, listen. When we inhale peace and exhale love, our beloved community thrives. To those of you here today and online, I ask, do you consider yourself part of this congregation? If so, then you are in part author of this poem, or dare I call each one of you, at least in some variation, a poet.